What's up YouTube, it's Eye of the Bow, and today I have a deck guide for you where you can consistently beat your opponent and decide the match in one minute. This deck is something that has been spreading on the ladder and you know I had to get my hands on it. If you've been with me, then you know I like to put my own spin to deck list, and that's what we have here today. This video will show you a different spin to this deck, making it more focused and introducing additional win conditions. Combo Boat, aka Did You Draw Destroy Action. Let's take a look at the deck. So this is the deck we are playing Ryu Metsushoryuken. Metsushoryuken gives combo to a friendly unit. And we also have this 5 MP unit in the deck that is pretty much the star of the whole deck. And this unit effectively gives you an Explore to gain a new unit. And that is going to be the Rising Sun. Now you can see there's a lot of text here. We got Heavy Pierce, Crush, Billover. So effectively what this unit does is it'll deal direct damage when it kills the enemy unit. It doesn't take any damage when dealing damage. And then also spillover allows you to deal half the damage that it's dealing to spread across the other lanes. So it's effectively a board wipe if you can get a lot of damage there. It's also dealing direct damage and it doesn't take any counter damage. But there is another effect here where this card can also not do counter damage itself. That's a, the first sentence after the abilities. When placed on the field, this unit will remove itself after 45 seconds. A card that I added to this deck list that not a lot of other players were probably playing was Itsuki. Itsuki, this card is valuable to the deck because it has the same abilities as the boat, except for the spillover part. So this card can effectively become your win condition, allowing you to have six cards instead of three to make your win condition more consistent and there's being the synergy in the deck already working with more cards so the combo pieces that you're really looking for are you need the boat or you need itsuki and then you need to have hayate's we only have three hayate's but this card is in the deck because it allows us to not brick it's a easy way for us to get agility and agility is a key card here by giving agility to one of itsuki or the rising sun What'll happen is the attack lines will happen twice before the enemy unit can actually hit our unit. And because it's going to happen twice, that means that we're dealing two instances of damage and we won't take any damage receiving back because we have crush. And on the second hit, usually if we have a lot of damage, there's going to be heavy pierce. So we're going to be dealing direct damage to the enemy player. So by having a unit with crush, by having a unit with agility, combo because of our hero art and heavy pierce this puts us in a situation like fate defying ryu which is usually an unstoppable unit that is our goal we are making unstoppable units an under 12 mp and beating up our opponent under a minute let's go over the support for the deck so here we have killer b strike cami killer b strike cami is a unit that got buffed because no matter when you play it it'll gain stat bonuses based on how many actions you have in your hand and in this deck we have a lot of actions we do play the one gold orb this gold orb allows you to effectively play safe against the mono black matchup if they have the destroy spell we have gold orb we can nullify that destroy ability we play leader summons in this deck because this is a way for us to get units into our field. It also does not affect Bombast. Bombast is a card that searches for units. So we are being able to get units on the field without actually having units in our deck. This is also a better card than Molsters because Molsters plays with our EX Pocket and our EX Pocket needs the space. So Leader Summons is a much better card. We play three Bombast. Bombast allows you to search any unit from your deck that's 5 mp or less if it's a human it gets a minus two reduced cost we have the doll's memory this is more for either doing an aggressive play because you do have the crush ability so you're never really taking any counter damage so it is safe to keep our units at a low health additionally this card can kill an enemy unit we play two disarms in the deck two disarms allows us to handle and stop any threats that we can't deal with while we are making our own threats for 2 mp this allows us to quickly take back the game we play three wall jumps these wall jumps are really good in the red matchup so that at any time that our opponent is trying to kill our units with any type of 
damage, we can counter that ability and instantly make them into, you know, they, they can't really control the situation anymore. Next up, we play Ill-Fated Queen Himiko. This is one of the, the more expendable cards into the deck, but the reason why we play this card is because it has Veil, it can't attack, so it doesn't have an attack line, which makes it a very resilient card that stays on the field. And what we want to do with it is we want to ascend Itsuki on top of Himiko, and this will deal damage to the enemy board, but also give us a very consistent ascension fodder. Next up, we have Forlorn Protector Lucia. This transforms into another Lucia, and it a pretty decent card it can win games by itself not all the time but it is worth having in the deck agents memories is just too good of a card because we play so many actions dealing five damage out of nowhere can prove useful we have liberating slash liberating slash allows us to deal nine and gain nine we can use this to heal ourselves or destroy an enemy unit and what's really nice about this deck is because we make a kill condition that is so unstoppable so strong giving nine life to the opponent is no big deal because they're going to lose it all in mere seconds chain fist is a great card for us to cycle and also deal with the early threats so we can get a strong foundation and the early game and that's pretty much the deck i'm really excited to share this deck with you and we're going to get into some gameplay Show me what you've got. Okay, so we are in the mono red matchup. This hand is pretty decent because we have the boat. Usually having Itsuki or a boat is the first thing you want to see. There are other pieces that we need to find, but we won't worry about that now. We are just going to use our cards in the best case possible, and then eventually we'll draw into our other pieces. That is the hope. So here we can see that they play Takeda. Takeda is a really good card and we have two Chain Fists. So having two Chain Fists allows me to just destroy this unit. And they just lost a 6 MP card where I only had to pay 2 mana to destroy it. In this case we didn't draw any other cards. But I am confident enough to play one boat. Even though we don't have the agility that is fine. But we will be dealing some damage here. Having combo and heavy pierce is good enough on its own. I can also play very aggressively against this matchup because I have two shields. I will play this Kami if my opponent does not do anything else. It seems our opponent is very slow with what they are wanting to do with their deck. Very good. They were able to destroy our card. I could have shield to seal our game. But I'm going to go ahead and just play a little bit slow. And this is where leader summons comes in. And like I said before, we can definitely use... Libertying Slash sparingly. Just doing that to remove the Rashid helps us. And Itsuki's going to fight this card. And we will deal 8 damage Heavy Pierce. And we will not take any return damage. What's nice is because it's an Ascension card, we can play another Itsuki. And then again, remember, Itsuki does not take any return damage, so it stays on the field. Mm. 
I'll take good care of you. This hand is okay, but it's not really good to have that many shields in the purple matchup. And this hand is a lot better because we have the boat. That's funny. They use Seaspire, but I'm going to head and use Leader Summons, and they surrendered. I will keep on fighting. I know the answer lies ahead. Our fists will do the talking. Target acquired. This hand's pretty decent. We got the boat in action. See, now we have Lucia. Usually I would play the boat, but because we have Lucia, I will actually play that card instead. Because we don't have agility. And agility would really make this a lot better. So I'm going to go ahead and use Chain Fist. I should be very careful and use a shield here. Unfortunately, any damage that I'm dealing doesn't really help. Because they just heal it all back. Oh, that's rough. That's one of the cards that will make us lose this matchup. Yeah. So in this video, I also said the video name was, the deck name was, did you draw a destroy action? And while Brainwash is not a destroy action, it might as well be because I, I just lost my unit. Yeah, the game's pretty much over. There's, there's no way. I won't give up. I cannot defeat one who will never stop. Don't look at me like that. I didn't do what you think I did. My fan is only barely decent. We do have the Hayate's, and usually I like to play that card first. Because playing the 5 drop is much more important just to guarantee or somewhat make a better chance of you being able to get the full effects from that card. Prepare yourself. Because if you play it first, then eventually that unit will die, and then you won't be able to get that ability where it makes the boat cheaper. We do need to use the Kami eventually, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in the off lane. Because we don't really want to take that damage that's coming from the gate. Looks like we drew into the boat. Very nice. They do use a kill spell, which is very unfortunate for them. Because that means that they won't be able to use the kill spell on something even more important, which is the boat. And this is what I mean by playing this card after Hayate. 
if you had a choice. So now, by the time I get to the boat, I, I will have Hayate out, and then that makes the boat one cost cheaper. Right? So if they don't have a kill spell, we pretty much win here. There is no destroy spell that can destroy this at 4 MP, so I'm very confident in using a action response to seal that unit bottom. And I like to do this early because agility attack lines are way too fast. If they play in action, it'll make me lose my trigger. So I'm, I'm, I've pretty much won the game. There's no way with their amount of mana that they can come back from this. And as you can see, they try to put a wall up, but it's not going to work. The boat wins, and that's what the deck does. I will keep on fighting. I know the answer lies ahead. Our fists will do the talking. Oh, nice. It looks like we drew the nuts. Whenever you get Hayate and this guy that gets the boat, that's a really good hand because those are all the main pieces that you need. So now all I have to do is play the boat and put agility on it and we win. I will wait until I am 5 MP. This is fine. This is fine. That is also fine. That evasive action is pretty decent, but it's not going to completely save him here. That is a very good play. They are going to theoretically lose their unit, and we'll keep ours. Or not. Let's go ahead and shield our unit. Incredible, we got, we won the trade. Ooh, a top 43 player. 
this hand is pretty decent. While we don't have the boat, we can definitely make this work with Hayate and Ipki. So what's really important for this Tenkuha player to do is he needs to kill this Hayate. And because he killed it, I am forced to now use Leader Summons. And we hope that one of them lives so we can play Itsuki and then we'll be able to go in. Alright, nice. We were able to go into the middle lane. And now I have Agility. And now we are dealing 10 damage per trigger. Except that they play Palumu as well. This is going to be rough. But let's go ahead and start answering the board. Got the good RNG there. It's not over yet. Last I'm just getting started. We do need a blocker for that Usagi Kenshin. Because otherwise. That card will halt us. And hey, look, we won in a minute and six seconds. I know the answer lies ahead. Some closing thoughts for this deck. I'm very happy that I got to share this deck with you. I do think that it is the most degenerate decks that I have ever seen. It makes me remember about Kami Ouroboros. It makes me remember about Valstrax. It makes me remember about Tenkuha V, the mysterious one, where you were able to deal 30 damage in one swing. This combo, this deck, is so consistent because I've never really felt like I lost because of my deck. Like, you cannot draw bad with this design of a deck. However, you can definitely lose a game if your opponent just seems to happen to have a lot of destroy spells. If they have a lot of destroy spells or even halts, then it is going to make your game plan a lot weaker and makes you lose the game. But generally, when you are playing this deck against any other deck, you are going to win in under a minute with this design of for the deck. You will not lose to bricking or drawing bad hands. So for that reason, it is just very consistent. I do want to give notice out to a good friend of mine, The Thirsty Games. The Thirsty Games is hosting a tournament. That tournament is going to be here on January 24th. Registrations close on January 23rd. If you want more information about this tournament that I will be playing in, please check out the link in the description. If you're new to the channel, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Any questions are always welcome. Let me know what decks you guys are seeing in the new season. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.